Hey guys, I just want to talk about power and authority. At the moment of the new birth, guys, the instant we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God gave you and I authority through the name of Jesus. In John 14, verses 12 through 14, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Guys, Authority became ours when we became a child of God. And every believer has authority. It's not anything we've earned or deserved. It was given by grace. And because authority is part of the foundation upon which our faith rests, we're going to see what the Word of God has to say about our authority in Christ. What is the difference between power and authority? Some may ask, but simply stated, authority is the channel through which power operates. You cannot have authority without power to back it, but neither can power work without a channel of authority. I kind of like to use the illustration of electric lights. Uh, You know, way across town, there's a power company where they generate electric power to to all the buildings. And connecting the power company with those buildings, there are wires which the power company uses to get electricity from their generator to the buildings. You could say the wires are the channels for the power coming from the electric company to the buildings. Now, if the power company represents God's power and the buildings represent the world we live in, then the wires are the believers who have God-given authority to bring his power to the world. Although God, our God, our mighty God, can manifest his power in many ways without using a believer, uh, and he has done so on many occasions, but our God, our Lord, prefers to work through his people. And that's you and I, brothers and sisters, those that are the redeemed of the Lord. God's power is awesome. Have you ever wondered why there are so many scriptures which tell us about the incredible power God possesses? I believe there is an important reason. The Bible tells us over and over how great and powerful God is. In order for you and I to be confident in our God-given authority, we must first have a solid trust in the awesome power of God, which backs up that authority. Uh, The Apostle Paul was well aware of the importance of believers understanding and trusting God's power when he prayed uh, the following prayer uh, for us in Ephesians 1, 15 through 19. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Guys, in the New Testament, the Greek word used for power is dunamis. Has anybody ever heard of uh, a stick of dynamite? Well, dunamis means ability and might. Ephesians 1.19 could be translated, 
And what is the exceeding greatness of his ability and might toward us who believe? You know, God loves to demonstrate his power through believers. In the Old Testament, in Isaiah 53, 1, it talks about the amount of power God has in just his arm, in, in, his, in his right arm. It says, uh, Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? I'd like to say that the arm of the Lord is revealed to those who believe the report. Guys, those who believe the report are us Christians. We have believed Jesus is our Messiah and have received him as our Savior. Therefore, the arm of the Lord is revealed to them, revealed to us. that We have the ability to comprehend the power that God wielded when he raised Jesus from the dead and purchased our redemption. In the Bible, the arm of the Lord is always a reference to the power God used in salvation. You can see Exodus 6, 6, Psalm 77, 15, Isaiah 52, 10, and 59, 16. In contrast, the hand of the Lord refers to the power of God when he used or when he created the universe. Now notice to purchase our redemption, God had to use the whole strength of his arm for that. But, but to create the universe, it says that he used his hand. Hebrews 1, 10 says, God created the earth with his hands, and Psalms 8, 3 tells us he created the universe with his fingers. Obviously, the arm is much stronger than the hand or the fingers, and so God displayed much greater strength when he redeemed us. Remember when Jesus used parables uh, to explain all the spiritual in more terms of the natural, you know, like he'd use seed or whatever. You know, many of those people planted seed. Everybody back then planted seed. They understood that. He used the things of the natural to explain the supernatural. And that's exactly what God is doing here. He's using a comparison that the whole strength of his right arm is what it took to purchase our redemption. And by the hands and the fingers of God, he created the universe. When God created the universe, he didn't even use all of his power. He only used his hands and fingers. But when he raised Jesus from the dead, when he bought us back from Satan and defeated him, God unleashed the exceeding greatness of his power. Guys, we have the power of God we have the power of God. I get so many comments. People are afraid. Guys, we have authority in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Glory. Guys, you and I have power and authority over all the works of darkness, and it only takes the finger of God to cast out demons. You know those oppressing demons that are oppressing you right now? It only takes a finger of God to push them out in Jesus' name. In Luke eleven twenty, it says, But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. Guys, those oppressing forces of hell that are coming against you by the finger of God, we can push them out. In the name of Jesus, go. Glory to God, glory to God. We don't have to be oppressed. We don't have to be depressed, even though many times we are. I understand pain. I've, I've dealt with pain. I know how uh, unspiritual you can feel when you're feeling pain. But let me tell you, Let's take the moment and remember and realize we have been endued with power from on high and we have authority over all the works of darkness. We'll pray in Jesus' name and take authority. If the arm of God exhibits the exceeding greatness of his power, 
we can hardly imagine all of his power. And his dunamis power is working through us who believe. But how does that actually happen, you know? Romans 8.11 says, But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwells in you. The power of God, the Holy Spirit, the arm of the Lord raised Jesus from the dead. And anybody who believes in Jesus Christ has that same dunamis power. The Holy Spirit living and working in them. Guys, I've said it more than once. I'm going to say it again. Um, when Jesus was born, he was born a man. He he lived a man and in and, and his ministry, he was endued with power from on high. He was full of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and power. Glory to God. And he went to the cross. He purchased our salvation. He defeated the devil and his demons and he took away the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And, and, and we are victorious. Amen? And he did that being 100% man. Yes, he was 100% God, but he was 100% man full of the Holy Ghost and power and destroyed the works of the devil. You and I as humans, oh glory, you and I as humans are full of the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead and we have power in Jesus' name. I want us all to meditate and study on the dunamis power. That's the ability and might of God. His power is embodied in the Holy Spirit who lives in you and I, knowing the Holy Spirit lives in us, is the rock-solid foundation of our understanding and security about our authority as a believer. Guys, time is short, and our King is truly coming. There is so much going on all over the world. Uh, being on you-know-who tube, you can't say a lot of words and can't say a lot of this or that, but there's lots of tension going on. I don't know what's going to go down, but I know who's going to go up, and that's going to be you and I when the trump of God sounds. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory, guys, that dead not then Christ is going to rise first, and those of us who are alive and remain are going to be caught up together with them in the air. Guys, like the old song says, just a few more weary days and I'll fly away. That day is fast approaching. I don't want anyone here to give up. I don't want anyone here to lay down and waller. We're not called to waller and squalor. We're called to 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 live uh, uh, by the Word of God. We, we, we live by the Spirit of God within, amen? He's the one that'll quicken us, and He's the one that'll empower us. We have the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Glory to God. We're going to fly soon, guys. We're going to fly soon. Uh, I wish it was five minutes ago. I'm past ready to go, but I just want to give you guys a little encouragement today. And when you start to feel beat down, and I'm preaching to myself, rise up and take authority in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God, the name above all names. Well, I'm going to close right there, guys. We do love you guys. We pray for you. And it's not going to be very long from now. We will be meeting in the air. We will be meeting in the clouds at any time. Until that day comes, guys, keep the faith and keep the fire of God burning. Keep the joy of the Lord deep within your hearts. Guys, one day soon we're going to hear the Master say, Well done, thou good and faithful servants. Guys, keep pressing on. Let's give her out, keep giving, let's keep fixing her eyes. We'll keep them fixed on Jesus 
And I strongly suggest we keep them fixed on the skies because that's where we're going to be at any time. God bless you. We'll see you here next time or we will see you in there at Maranatha.